I don't know when when you went back or what you made that decision, but like when I think of guys like Devin Townsend or, or Eric Rutan, they're they're both they're they're incredible musicians, but it, yeah, it almost yeah. seems seems like some of this seemed to be picked up by the fact that they opted to go and create their own studios as well. Did you yeah. did you want to go do that uh, initially? I think I was in in preparation for this. I was watching I think the uh, Hypocrisy Biography DVD, and you were complaining about how poorly the first album turned out because. Like when you recorded, yeah. the producers had not heard heavy metal before. Was that, I guess, a catalyst for trying to do something yourself? Yeah, that was the third album, actually, The Fourth Dimension. I mean, the two first albums we recorded in my friend's studio that I was talking about that I wanted to go back home to to create my music in. And uh, I helped him doing some demos for local bands, and he gave me some free times to uh, record my stuff. So uh, after two albums in that studio, uh, we plan on the third one and we felt that we had some wind in the sails, so to say. So we wanted to go big. So we went to a major studio in Stockholm. It's called Par uh, Park Studio. I think uh, there's a lot of bands that you know that's been recording there, Europe and things like that and, and more yeah. uh, com commercial, commercial and software bands, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we had this engineer that had no fucking clue. <laughs> and uh, the, the album turned out really terrible in in sounding wise you know it sounds really weird and uh, but at the same time as we were there i bought the the, the studio from uh from my friend because he was going to close down the studio and and that's really how i started to uh get more niched into it you know um like i said i did some demos before with other bands and it was nothing really that i wanted to open a studio for for other people it was mainly just for my band. It would be a good tool to to get, you know, good productions and so on. But it wasn't as easy as I thought because I think we um, the album, the first album we did in Abyss was uh, abducted, and I think I re-recorded it like three times, uh, threw away like three four songs every time, and and writing new ones. So in the end, it, it was a lot of effort. But I think it came out really good, and it's still a, mind, a milestone today, you know, in the mm -hmm. sound and the songs and everything. Yeah. So I think that's think? where we really niched our our own sound and our own style. Mm. And how do you think you sort of became, you know, the guy? Like I, I don't have I don't have a the Wikipedia page in front of me, but from like mm. you know, flesh crawl grave, even like early Sabaton, like everyone's. Mm been through your doors effectively of you know of this sort of a scandinavian sound to a degree yeah um i don't know maybe they heard something i recorded and then people ask you know like hey can you help me with this and it grows a little bit more and more and then all suddenly more famous bands um takes a notice of you and then it grows a little bit more and i think that's how it was what people heard that i did in the mid nineties, uh, kind of stare them to my studio, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy with the, all the bands I recorded. Cause I mean, there's been a lot of bands coming and going, hmm. as you said, you know, and I'm really, I always keep an eye on everybody see how they do in nowadays. And it's great to see their, uh, career just bloom, you know, most of yeah. them.